Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. And the real question is, if you had a boatload of money, would you buy Bitcoin? If you owned millions and millions and millions of dollars, would you take some or large portions of your wealth and purchase Bitcoin? To answer that question, we're going to look at what are wealthy people doing? Are they buying Bitcoin? Um, and we're going to specifically look at institutions. So it's an institution is not really a wealthy individual, but rather a wealthy group of individuals who are under the umbrella of a company. So let's take a look at it. Should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. Man, does it really make a big difference uh, when it comes to the YouTube algorithms and just promoting this video. It really helps us out. So if you do us a favor and smash that like button, it really is a big deal to us. We would be eternally grateful. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. Finance is not my background. My background is in software, software engineering. For the last 20 years, I've been writing software for large institutions. Um, and my background is also in web development, web design. And so this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. And so... As always, take what I say with a grain of salt and do your own research. When it comes to investing, whether it's cryptocurrency or real estate or something, you know, stocks and bonds or something else entirely, always research it out. Get a good understanding of what you're putting your money into before you put your own money at risk because any investment is a risk. But cryptocurrency in particular involves substantial risk of loss. Read the rest of this disclaimer. It's The reason for it is to help you make good decisions. And if you follow the advice of this disclaimer, you're going to help protect yourself from making bad, bad decisions that end up hurting you in a big way. All right, so... Um, one thing I want to remind you of when it comes to Bitcoin, historically, based on history, if you buy Bitcoin, hold it for three years, and then sell it, you make money. If you look at these numbers, from if you bought Bitcoin on January 1, 2017, and you bought $1,000 worth of Bitcoin on January 1, and then three years later sold it December 31st, 2019, you would have gotten $7,206 back when you sold your $1,000 worth of Bitcoin. And if you look at these numbers, there are some, I mean, this last one is absolutely amazing. And so take a look at these numbers and understand I'm trying to, to help you with the idea that, uh, look, the only people that I know of that have lost money with Bitcoin bought and sold it in less than three years. Um, if you look historically at the numbers, I don't think you can find a date throughout the history of Bitcoin where you could have bought it, held it for three years, and lost money. It, it just, I've done my research. I can't find a date where that would have happened. If you can find a date where that would have happened, I would love to hear from you. Point it out, and then I'll go verify it. And if, you, if you're right, I will make a video uh, showing the information you discovered and share it. But other than that, uh, I have not been able to find a date in the history of Bitcoin where... And now, I'm talking about close prices. I'm not talking about highs and lows in a single day. Maybe there, maybe there is a date where if you bought it at the high on such and such a date and sold it on the low of such and such a date where you might have lost money. I hadn't thought about that until just now. Um, but based off of the close prices uh, in the last in the history of Bitcoin, you would not have lost money. All right, so one third of institutions have invested in crypto, says Fidelity. 
So like I said, I wanted to focus on institutions because uh, through media and news and other, other vehicles, we can find out what institutions are doing. You know, when it comes to individuals that own millions of dollars, a lot of times they don't, they're not as uh, easily, uh, it's not as easy to find out information about what they're doing. Um, so Fidelity is one of those big trading companies and they have millions of dollars under assets and they have strong relations with a large number of institutional investors and so they went out and did a survey and in their survey Fidelity found uh, talked to 774 institutional investors and found that more than one-third of firms worldwide have invested in cryptocurrency. Now think about that for a second. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that the wealthy on all of the media were, were dogging and downplaying. I mean, they called crypto all kinds of horrible names, and, and you couldn't find a, a media outlet like you know msnbc or fox business or one of the others i mean there's hundreds of them out there um it was it was almost impossible to find one that was saying good things about cryptocurrency i mean warren buffett uh has called cryptocurrency rat poison squared so uh for to find out that while publicly institutional investors have been dogging cryptocurrency that behind the scenes, one third of them worldwide have actually bought cryptocurrency tells us something. It tells us that publicly they're saying it's horrible and privately they're actually buying it. And so when people want to get into conspiracy theories, hmm, maybe there's a conspiracy theory. Maybe institutions have been telling us how horrible cryptocurrency is so that they can privately buy it at a lower price. Is that possible? It's happened before. 36% of institutions own cryptocurrency globally. What? That's more than a third. Only 27% of U.S. institutions surveyed own crypto. Now, one of the things that I've found in the cryptocurrency market, especially, you know, with the with the different places that I put post my videos and and chat with people online and so on most of us are u.s citizens most of us have a very u.s centered life um and yet the united states is not what drives cryptocurrency china and the asian market drive the price and drive cryptocurrency to a much larger degree than the u.s is i mean Currently, there's somewhere around 60%, 55% of all, crypt, of all Bitcoin mining is happening in Asian markets. And so if, if the miners are in Asia, in China and Japan and Hong Kong and other Asian countries, then it would be silly for us to think that the U.S. is the real driver behind cryptocurrency. We're not. The United States is not. And so as a result, we see fewer U.S. institutions purchasing cryptocurrency because they don't have the same perspective that those outside of the United States actually have. In fact, I don't have the actual number, but given that there's such a smaller number of U.S. companies that are involved in cryptocurrency, I think if we said, what's the percentage of of firms outside of the U.S. that own cryptocurrency, that would have to be much larger than 36%. So maybe that should tell us something. Uh, Bitcoin is the most popular, followed by Ethereum. So the majority of institutions are purchasing Bitcoin. A few institutions are purchasing Ethereum. And then the others were not listed in the information that I, I read. So there's, there's 2,000 different cryptocurrencies that you and I could buy, but for whatever reason, institutions are focused on Bitcoin. Now, one of the reasons why I like to share what institutions and people with wealth are doing is because, look, if you had millions of dollars and you were going to invest, 
you would find some experts, you would spend some money, you would find some analysts that you trusted and respected, and you would have them do research for you. In other words, before you invest millions of dollars, especially as an institution, because an institution has responsibilities to their investors, the, the people who have put money into the institutions. And so they, because they have a, response, a fiduciary responsibility to the people who have invested in the institution, institutions are required to be very careful with that money. And so in order to be careful, they're going to do a lot of research, have a lot of evidence backing up their decisions. And the decisions that they came to is that Bitcoin is the best place to put their money, Ethereum is the second best place to put their money, and the rest of the cryptocurrency market didn't make enough of an impact to even be included in the article. So that should tell us something. Maybe we should focus our investing on Bitcoin with Ethereum a close second. All right, and then the next thing is, since the halving, Grayscale's Bitcoin Investment Trust has aggressively ramped up its Bitcoin purchases to roughly one and a half times the rate of newly mined Bitcoin. So if you're not familiar with Grayscale's Bitcoin Investment Trust, you can go into most stock market uh, trading software. So if, you, if you're part of Charles Schwab or you're, you have an account on TD Ameritrade or an account you know, a stock market account with many other companies, then you should be able to purchase a, a crypto or a, a ticker symbol called GBTC. And that is Grayscale's Bitcoin Investment Trust. And when you buy GBTC, you are buying a fund that owns Bitcoin. And that fund is 80% to 90% of the, the dollars purchasing GBTC on the stock market are institutional investors. If you look at the quarterly reports that come out from the Grayscale Bitcoin Investment Trust, those quarterly reports tell us that real close to 90% of the dollars purchasing GBTC are coming from institutions. And so this is another way that we can get exposure to find out what the wealthy or wealthy institutions are purchasing when it comes to Bitcoin and they're purchasing enough Bitcoin that it's greater than, it's one and a half times the rate of newly mined Bitcoin. That is impressive. And that really, we, you know, we should learn something from that in terms of, hey, where is a good place to put our money? If we want, if, if we want to find, you know, if, if you had millions of dollars and you spent a whole bunch of money doing research, um, you, you and I, since I don't have millions of dollars, I'm guessing that you don't have millions of dollars, we don't have access to the same research that the institutions are paying for but we have access to see what actions they take as a result of that research. So they had this great big meeting. They talked about all the pros and cons. And at the end of the day, they made a decision. And we can watch what they did because of that decision. And part of that decision is they're buying enough of GBTC that it's causing GBTC to buy one and a half times the amount of newly mined Bitcoin on a daily weekly, monthly basis ever since the happening, And so that is significant. All right, now let's look at, let's look at more indications of what the whales or institutions or those who have a lot of money are doing. Uh, currently, we've seen Bitcoin addresses with more than 100 Bitcoins is increasing. And that's indicating a bull run ahead. So let's take a look at the info. Bitcoin addresses that contain more than 100 Bitcoin are on the rise, according to data fetched by Santiment. Santiment is one of the companies that goes out and it, it has software that evaluates the blockchain. <coughs> and their software has found that the Bitcoin addresses with 100 Bitcoin and more have been increasing. In fact, there were 43 new big crypto wallets holding more than a ton 
Bitcoin. I don't know why they said that. I should have edited that. Anyway, there's 40 through 43 new crypto wallets that have 100 Bitcoins and 100 Bitcoins at today's prices is worth millions of dollars. Now, the growing number of large Bitcoin holders has lately resulted in short-term price rallies. And so some of the rallies that we've seen where the price started going up was the result of people adding more Bitcoin to those addresses and then suddenly the address pops over that 100 Bitcoin mark um, in terms of the number of, of actual Bitcoin that address is holding and containing. Now that is a good sign because that's another indicator of what are people with millions of dollars doing right now they're buying and they're holding Bitcoin. They're not selling it and they're not day trading it. They're buying and holding it. And so uh, another clue that we can use so that we can avoid losses and take profits. So our goal is to avoid losses and take profits. And we're going to do that with information that's coming from the, the wealthy um, because they've spent a whole bunch of money doing research. And so we want to we take action consistent with what they did when it came to investing in Bitcoin. And so again, this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. But let's go ahead and conclude this video for today. I've given you enough for one day. How can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions, thoughts, comments? I'd love to hear from you. If you disagree with what I've said, please leave your polite disagreements in the comments below and we can hash it out. So in the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl, and do me a favor. Have a fantastic day.